God's desire is to have a family. So he made man. His intent is to have a royal ruling class of kings and priests made in his image and likeness with the authority to govern in his kingdom. God wanted to extend his kingdom, so he created the heavens and the earth. After they were made, God placed man in the, in the Garden of Eden and gave him dominion over all the earth. God's kingdom is perfect, full of love, life, in light, and he made man to be part of it. God's enemy also has a kingdom, and it is the exact opposite of God's kingdom in every way. The enemy's kingdom is full of hate, death, and darkness. There is nothing good about his kingdom. These two kingdoms have been in contention for ages, but the enemy has already been judged, and his kingdom will soon come to an end. God's kingdom is everlasting. Let's look at our foundation scripture. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved son. So today on this podcast, I want to talk about the two kingdoms. There are two kingdoms right now in operation in this earth today. We have the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Now, each kingdom is made up of several components. And these components are, first, in order to have a kingdom, there must be a governing body or a king or a leader. There must be subjects or citizens. There must be a territory or an area of dominion. There must be laws. There must be customs or a way of doing things. There must be power. And there must be a destiny. Those are the seven different components of a kingdom that I want to quickly talk about today. We'll start with the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is ruled by Satan. His area of dominion is in this earth. And his subjects are the unbelievers. His law is to lie because there is no truth in him. His custom or way of doing things is to do evil. It says in Romans chapter 8 verse 7, Because the carnal mind is hatred or hostile to God, it does not submit to God's law, nor is able to do so. The power of Satan's kingdom is simply illusion or deception. It says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Romans seven eleven says, For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me. So, according to this scripture, we can be deceived by sin. Satan's destiny is eventually going to be hell and the lake of fire. It says in Revelation 20, verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Matthew 25, verse 46 and 41 says, then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, ye cur- you cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And verse 46 says, And these will go away into everlasting punishment. Now the kingdom of God is ruled with Jesus Christ as king. His realm of dominion is heaven and earth. His citizens are those that accept him as Lord and Savior. They are the believers. It says in James chapter 1, verse 18, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be of a kind of first fruits of his creatures. John 1, 13 says, Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 
And it says in Ephesians 1 13, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. First Peter 1 23 says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The laws in the kingdom of God is the gospel. It says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And the second half of verse 13 says, Through love serve one another. All these are the laws of the kingdom of God. Ephesians 5, 9 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14 says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. And It says in verse 14, put on love. These are the laws of the kingdom of God. The custom of the kingdom of God is to simply do what's right. Romans 14 verses 17 and 18 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. The power of the kingdom of God is victory. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Luke 11.20 says, But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, what is the destiny of the kingdom of God? It is a new heaven and a new earth and an everlasting kingdom. Psalm 145 verse 13 says, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. It says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 27, Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey Him. There are only two kingdoms that we can choose from. So, it is up to us to choose wisely while we still have time to do so. Choose Jesus and choose the kingdom of God.